the people that are getting in early are the people that are going to get their legs underneath them firmly. And as it builds momentum and as more people come in, they're going to be the ones that can create that engaging experience for their customers, mm-hmm. for their patrons, for their, uh, you know, par- parishioners, for, for their people, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that right there is, is the value. And like you said, I mean, you know, $10 billion a year is what, Meta is spending on building out this platform. They're not doing that because they think maybe it's going to be something. They're doing that because this is going to be something. (laughs) Maybe people might come here and play solitaire. (laughs) Right, right. Welcome to Well Metaverse, the podcast where Jason Earls and Aaron Sorrells navigate the explosive growth in the metaverse. Buckle up because we are in for a heck of a ride. Jason Earls, uh, first off, where are you? <laughs> what kind of baller <laughs> pad are you in, man? <laughs> We've changed locations today. <laughs> man, it looks like a gazelle, maybe a zebra back. What, what, what's going on? Tell me where you're at. <laughs> Dude, right now I am in West Africa, uh, <laughs> just in the middle of this nice n- nice hut inside. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually at my mentor's house in the state of Washington. Oh, very cool. Very he's, cool. He's an amazing, amazing, amazing leader. Uh dude pushes me like no other. It's like this is this is my this is a great silo. It's a my escape from the world, my a safety zone for me. Come here and get poured into before I go back out there and go hunting. Uh, so <laughs> let let's talk about that for a minute. Because the dynamics, I mean, first off, of course, the place where you're hanging out looks really, really cool. But much cooler than that is what you just said. You are at your mentor's house and it is your oasis. Uh, Tell me about that. Man, listen, I, I, you know, so where do I start? First of all, uh, I met Dan at a, at a men's event and while well, I was doing stand-up comedy and from the jump, he recognized in me, like he, he, he encouraged a part of me that is oftentimes overlooked. Now, let me explain what mm. I mean. And this, in this space that I pr- primarily do stand up comedy in, it's a space where it's a, it's mostly a Christian space. So mm-hmm. it's nonprofit world, uh, church world. And so typically in the church world, it's like you're either funny or you're a speaker. You're not yeah. both. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. If you're funny, if you're really funny, you can't be a good speaker. Mm. And if you're a good speaker, you can have a little bit of humor, but you can't be a focused, funny person. Mm-hmm. And this guy just, man, he, he saw that I was actually doing stand-up comedy. And he was like, you speak, don't you? I was like, oh, how did you know, first of all? <laughs> because if, if I tell you, are you going to shoot me? Are you part of the, <laughs> the non-comedy FBI? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, man, he just started inviting me up here to speak, and just became like again one of my greatest, one of one of my greatest cheerleaders, pushers, challengers, even. Ooh, cheerleaders, pushers, challengers. Wow. Yeah, man, it's it's, it's pretty awesome. So it's like when I come up here, I could stay at a hotel, but just this, the scenery here, but, mm-hmm. but the best part. Is the breakfast conversations? Oh, I bet, dude. Yeah. Nothing like having breakfast with a person who knows how to influence people. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's so great. Well, man, that sounds. You know what jumps out to me about that is is one the obvious appreciation you have for that relationship, um, but but also what jumps out to me is he sought you out. Mm. he noticed something in you and said, Hey, let's start a relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, and it's like, and refuses to let me live underneath my potential. Mm. Refuses to let you live underneath your potential, man. 
All right. I guess let's, let's call it. We've, we've covered enough in this, <laughs> man. Cause that, that the dynamics of that mentor relationship is very, very special. And, yeah. and the people who have the opportunity to, to step into relationship with that from either side, from, from seeing potential in somebody and deciding I'm all in, I'm going to make this person feel so comfortable with me that they can come do a video podcast, uh, in, in the living room or den or whatever, whatever room that happens to be, uh, that this you're is, in. This is the bathroom. This, this is, is the bathroom. bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, actually, I'm sitting on the toilet right now. Yeah, yeah. I got to admit that's that's one of the nicer fireplaces I've seen in a bathroom. <laughs> keeps, keeps your butt warm, I tell you that. Much. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. But but I mean, so for somebody to to recognize that in somebody and and to open themselves up and make that person so comfortable that they can engage in a, in a, in a real level like that. That's, that's awesome. And then again, like you said, on the receiving end of that uh, mentorship relationship to have somebody that, that is going to push you, that is going to challenge you and uh, not allow you to live below your potential. Yeah. And it takes authenticity on both parts. Mm. It takes, excuse me, it takes the authenticity on the mentors side, just to see the potential and to push you and to be open and honest with you about what he sees, what he doesn't see, what she sees, doesn't see. But then it's it's a whole nother part for you to be vulnerable and say, yes, you are correct. Uh, here's something else. Like run into accountability. Uh, mm. You know, one, one of my old mentors said this. Uh, it takes, the, the, you have two people. You have those who have the gift of giving but you also have to have the people who have the gift of receiving. Mm. Which is harder? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> You're exactly yeah. right. Yeah, it depends on your pride. Yeah, uh, right, right. You know, so it take if if you're going to have a to really be a good uh I guess the the Christian term would be steward or or mm. manager to to manage a, a gifted person in your life who has the ability uh, and the giftedness to pour into you, you have to actually display the giftedness to receive it. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, 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 someone I know and someone who you know very, very well, Michael Jr. Um, y- he talks about that as at his events the the gift to um, the gift to give, but also how important it is to be able to receive. Communerosity is what he called. Yeah, it. That's right, communerosity. <laughs> Man, when he when he said that, uh, he, well, he was at his event, and it was a, a break time, and and he invited people to go out to see, see his merchandise table, mm-hmm. uh, which I love what he said. He said a hundred percent of the funds from everything that comes in from this merchandise uh, will will go to support a black family in Texas. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and, uh, I thought that was great, but then he says, you know, to the people of high net worth out there, to the people that have means to the people that are constantly giving, I want you to just take a minute and receive. I want you to come up to the table, find something that you want and just take it. Do not give anything. Yeah. Just receive that because you need to be able to do that. And I, I was moved by that. I was like, oh, I'm not an ultra high worth, net worth individual, but I'll take something. No, <laughs> <laughs> like, Yo, give me two of them, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, communerosity. What, uh, th- what a great concept. Yeah. That idea is like if, if you go out to eat and you always have to be the one that pays, yeah. the one who pays, like something's wrong. Yeah. Like what's. Or why can't you, what is it inside of you that won't allow you to receive a blessing from somebody else? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. A, a show that I've drawn a lot of personal wisdom from uh, the Sopranos. <laughs> Tony, Tony Soprano. There's a, there's a scene where there's a young man dating his daughter and, and he picks up the tab and he about gets his arms broke because yeah. nobody picks up the tab around 
Tony Soprano, you know, <laughs> and, and what is that? You know, that's ego. That's absolutely. I that's got insecurity. Yeah. 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 That's uh, yeah. So geez, we, we covered both Michael Jr. and the Sopranos. So, <laughs> <laughs> man, oh man. So how you been, man? What's up? What's been up with you? I've been good. This, this has been an interesting week because I have, uh, been able to step back a little bit. The Soapstone is pivoting into a new season Ooh. where it is not my energy and my effort that is driving the shows. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Dude, so that this is beautiful <laughs> because it seems like with exponential growth, what what like what, what I remember one podcast we said uh Man, this is like compounding interest in terms of mm-hmm. now you're living off the interest, my boy. It, you know, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you what, it's it's a battle because everything in me says perform, do, do, do. But I know that the season that it's in is there's other leaders that have been empowered. There's other people that have stepped up to run the show. Yeah. And and honestly, like if I don't step back. I will hinder it more than I'll help it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, uh, but it's a weird feeling. I mean, it's my whole life. It's been perform, 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 do, do, do. And now the, the best way that I can uh, influence a situation is to do less is to step back is to just let it bloom. And it's wild, brother, man. Jesus, take the wind. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh my goodness. And it's good timing too. Cause the, uh, this past weekend, uh, my wife and I got to go goof around a little bit. We took our Jeep out and did some two track and go got lost in the, in the woods for a bit. It's, <laughs> you know, what's amazing when, for those of y'all who don't know, so Aaron and I, we have these conversations on Fridays, <laughs> uh, or, well, let me, we have these conversations on a certain day. And Aaron said, man, can we shift the day? And I was like, this dude is going on a date. <laughs> I'm yep. like, that's, which, which I was excited for you. <laughs> it's great that you, you shifted the schedule to spend time with your wife. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and she, she, uh, she's a pretty cool gal. I like her a lot. <laughs> that is so awesome, bro. Yeah. So it's been, it's been kind of cool, but, and that's, that's also though allowed me to refocus and, and redirect my, my efforts. You know, if I'm not, if I'm not, if it's not my energy and effort, that's, that's driving the daily operations forward. Now I can start thinking a little bit ahead and think, okay, where are we going? How are we going to pivot? What are we going to do next? Yeah. What's beautiful about this is we're seeing, for those of us who've been a part of this journey and watched the evolving of and the growth of the, of team of the Soapstone Comedy Club, we've seen Aaron, the unemployed alcoholic, go from being a a bells and whistles, the nuts and bolts of the operation. To now have him become the overall manager sitting in the high seat of it. And it's uh that's which which we had this conversation a few uh a few conversations ago, and that is this. It was one of my the funniest proverbs is <laughs> under three things the earth trembles, under four it cannot bear up. And the first one, excuse me, when a servant becomes a king. So again, it's not like God hates when servants like move up and get promoted. But the idea is if a servant becomes a king and doesn't shift his thinking, yeah, then the earth is in earth is in trouble. Yeah. And so we're watching you shift the thinking. Uh as as the guy who leads, who's the king of the soapstone. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a sword. You do have a sword. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's and and I'll tell you that that the shift in thinking it's hard to do, especially because of the pace, you know, again, in the metaverse, the pace of stuff is just, it's incredible. 
like like we we've been at it for like six months not even six months and it feels like we are a seasoned cornerstone of the metaverse you know like we're one of the old old dogs in town like uh, it's uh it's wild but but uh you know the the things that brought us here are not the things that are going to bring us to the next level of success who you know? moved my cheese <laughs> that's right that's that, <laughs> You know what? I got that book over on the shelf. <laughs> yep, exactly. Who moved my cheese? Excellent book. Quick, easy read and uh, entertaining read, and full of great insight on how to adapt change. <laughs> yeah, it's we, the human brain, and I know I've said this before, but we can never hear this enough that the human brain is wired in a way to always protect and be safe and so the normal pattern things this is the safe way so when the cheese mm, is being moved mm-hmm. why are we doing it this way you know, it's, <laughs> so it's bulking up uh, yeah. against it man and mm-hmm. so yeah it takes a lot of trust and selflessness to be able to shift the thinking and that's what a lot of people don't change the thinking because it's difficult to do yeah and the trust, I mean, the trust has to be there because, I mean, like my soft little underbelly is showing, you know, yeah. if, if some of the people that I've that would empowered, happen in, that would happen anyway, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No shirt covers that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like one guy said, man, he, uh, bo- both of us have disease, uh, the disease called booty do. <laughs> you ever heard of booty do? No. Your stomach sticks out more than your booty do. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, it's true. <laughs> I forgot. I, I need to give the comedian credit who said I can't remember, but that's one of the funniest things. <laughs> yo, yo. But that, that just be you know. I, the one thing I like to remember is back in the Greek days, uh, the sign of prosperity and success was being a little bit overweight. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'm, just, I'm just carrying on that tradition. <laughs> you know. Dude, when I, when I, my first trip to the continent of Africa in the country of Ghana, mm. by the way, uh, when you go to a, when you visit a country in, in Africa, for, for peak's sake, guys, don't just say you went to Africa. Name the mm. country. Like, man, I'm going to mm. Africa. Really? Where? You know, like <laughs> so, so I went to Ghana and uh they, you know, the stump my stump was out. They called it say Obolo Obolo, which means fat. But they they're like, dude, you fat. But that's a sign of prosperity. <laughs> right, right. They're like, he's doing well. Yeah. He eats. <laughs> yep, he eats. Yep. You have we desire to have booty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's it's an all right thing. My my doctor probably would say you don't have to be that prosperous. But. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got abundance, my brother. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm derailing the conversation. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, my, my my belt floweth over. <laughs> right. That brother yeah. got an Elon Musk stomach. <laughs> Oh man. He, he can drive a car by himself with it. <laughs> yep. ba- balance is a soda pop. Right. <laughs> I'm sitting in a chair. Yeah, that's how you know you're overweight when you start resting your fingers. Like, that's, that's right. Yep. 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 Resting rest your hands on yourself. Yep. 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 I was like, yep, I'm doing bad right now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, actually at, at church this morning, I saw a friend of mine and he had lost some weight and I'm like, man, you, you look like you've lost some weight. And he said, I probably have. Um, I, I started eating less and doing more. <laughs> I, like, oh, I guess yeah. that that'll, uh, that'll do it. Right. You lost, you lost your armrest, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. But so, the underbelly, you were saying the underbelly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, so yeah, there's a vulnerability that that comes along with stepping back and empowering people to do, because if they do for a while um, for the soapstone and then decide, wait, I want to do for myself, uh, you know, that it, it the, there's a little bit of risk there that, yeah. um, you know, if it if if you make it all about other people, there's a risk that maybe they won't like you anymore. And then they'll, you know, 
but I don't know. I mean, I, uh, to tell you the truth, I mean, I'm, I'm not concerned about that because of two things. One, the, the quality of the people or the character of the people that are involved strike me as really good. Um, and they, they seem committed and they seem good. And then also, um, there's enough people that are involved that, um, it, it, one person or even a couple of people aren't going to sink the ship, mm. you know, if, uh, cause we will, we will have turnover, you know, we will have people that decide that they don't want to be involved anymore. We already have had uh turnover in some pretty key positions and, and with some key people. Um, but the, the whole is, is much greater than the sum of the parts. And, uh, and there's some, uh, there's some protection there. Boy, that's pretty transparent to, to, to talk about that aspect of it, that, uh, you know, it's, it's the people are good, but even when I might misjudge a person or two here or there, um, the whole is so much greater than the sum of the parts that, um, it'll take more than, uh, it would take a lot to sink the ship, I guess. So, and that's the beauty of the ship that's been created. It's like, man, once the ship set sail, it, another admiral, like the admiral can fall dead, mm. but it ain't, it's not going to sink. It's like, right, hey, right. who, who can lead us? Right. Well, Let's and, and for that matter, for that matter, you know, that goes for me as well. You know, if, if something, if something were to happen to me, um, it could it could go on. It could it it could continue on. <laughs> the king is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought you were getting ready to sneeze, but you were just yeah. getting ready to lean into that yeah, accent. <laughs> yeah. The king is dead. <laughs> what shall we do? <laughs> oh man, yeah. But Today it's is challenge day. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, but it's wild. It's wild to see. Uh, see the team gelling together. Like there's a, there's a chat group. Um, and like, I just, like, I hardly say anything in it. It's just somebody like, Hey, I got the show coming up tonight. I need somebody to fill this, this, and this role. People will jump in and be like, I'm on it, you know? And it's just, it's just all happening. Yeah. It's, it's cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Now you just making sure the plates keep spinning up. Oh, that plate's falling down to me. Spin yeah. Again. Right. And then, and then think about, okay. Um, so this team of people, you know, how do we reinforce them? How do we empower them? How do we, um, take it to the next level? Uh, you know, um, so that they can step back and appreciate this, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, and that'll be, you know, that'll be hard work. It'll take forever, probably like three to four weeks, (laughs) Mm. (laughs) but yeah, and and things are good uh, in the soapstone. We we had a huge bump in traffic. Uh, we've the the last full week of data as of this morning that we have it was eleven thousand uh, visitors. So you know we we hit uh, we hit a plateau and then it dropped a little bit and we made some adjustments and now it's back on the rise and it blew past the level that we were at before. So. It's it's happening. Good things are happening. Still, uh, still about thirteen hundred uh, members to Team Soapstone, and that's with the closed uh, Facebook group. Yeah, um, that's one of the things to think ahead on. That's one of the things that I'm starting to think of now. Okay, what is the purpose of this Facebook group? Mm-hmm. You know how how can we use this as a tool to best meet people's needs? Because right now it's great. There's a lot of social interaction there's um you know there's some information but but there's something else that we can do with that facebook group you know that can be the conduit of of people saying i want to get plugged in i want to lead right yeah i just think it's one the the reinforcement of the culture and I, i maybe now it's you watch the organic growth mm-hmm. and what does the, the organ, the organism of this now organization, what is it forming into? What do you see? What do you see it going? What it, you know, it's, I always, I, this is what I love about organizations. 
is looking at the authenticity, the organism within the organization, and how do you create, how do you organize, uh, or bring organization to the organic growth? Mm, yeah, you know, and you know, and 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 I think it's a delicate balance of the speed in which you do that. Mm. You can't move it too slow. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can't you can't move it too fast, and you can't just do nothing to where the slowness of it just often fizzles out. It's kind of like yeah. when when water is flowing, you can let the water spread, or you can you can channel that bad boy. Yeah, yeah. You say, "Ooh, look at you know, yeah. look at where it's going." Yep. Yep. So you know, I think what would be an awesome idea is what if it look what would it look like if how do I think about soapstone when I'm outside of the metaverse. Hmm. You know, what if what does it look like if when 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 you when you unveil the team soapstone or, or the soapstone comedy club t-shirts. Mm-hmm. When you what if there was actually a, a real soapstone that people could have in their kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. hey here's a here's a soapstone soapstone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, and just that way it's uh so what the soapstone is in the metaverse, and which is what I'm always I'm always interested in this. How 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 does what I am and what I display in, in the soapstone show up outside in real life? Uh in the true world. Yeah. What do you call it? There's a phrase that you use. You said you like life in the metaverse, and what is what do you call life outside the metaverse? You use the same. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, uh, IRL in in real life, or yeah, IRL. I think yeah, 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 maybe that. Yeah, boy, that's that's interesting because yeah, a hundred percent of our focus on finding the identity of the soapstone uh, has been on the soapstone in the metaverse. Right. You know who are we? in the metaverse. And, you know, we, we haven't yet really presented the soapstone to people outside of the metaverse. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's probably one school of thought to start thinking about, okay, yeah, yeah, go, go. But it's, man, I found people, people who saw my video, my YouTube video on the metaverse tour, people is, you all right, brother, the unemployed alcoholic can't drink. (laughs) Who's that? I I, like, I, <laughs> I'm just I'm just reminiscing. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <"You're right." laughs> but I, people, how, how do we look outside of the metaverse? <laughs> that's funny. Fold your hands. <laughs> uh you know, but people who saw the 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 Jason Earls Metaverse tour are intrigued about the soapstone. Mm. It's that's one of their favorite parts about it. It's like, well, oh, it's cool. I, now I've even had friends who do have Oculus. They uh, is it Oculus or Oculus? What's the uh, plural? Uh, Oculi. Oculi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of my friends who have Oculi. Uh, <laughs> Man, pray for them. They, they really suffer. Right, hey, right. Hopefully they get cured. Sounds horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> but they're like, man, I had to go check out the soapstone. It's oh, cool, cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, there's there's something that's public knowledge that uh, they're getting close to releasing a version of the metaverse that's accessible through um, through two-dimensional, you know, on a, on a Mac or a PC. And it'll be interesting to see what that, what that does, but that's gonna, that's gonna make this accessible to so many more people. It won't be as, as dynamic of an experience, of course. Uh, (laughs) That's funny. Like, yeah, it just handicaps you in the metaverse. Like this Right, you, right. You, you get up front parking spaces. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. he doesn't. Yeah. He can't see as well. He right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, people are going to be bobbling around and you're going to yeah. be like, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're on a computer. It's, yeah. 
it's he's, okay. Yeah. He's Oculite in a pair. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oculite challenged. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but when that happens, uh, when it becomes accessible to all these people that, that ca- just purely cannot access it, access it right now. Right. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be, I mean, that's going to hundred X the audience size. So, you know, we got to yeah. start thinking about that. I mean, we can't think too much about it because um, we don't know exactly what it's going to look like and how it's going to be. But we, we do have to start thinking about, okay, what's going to happen when we 100X? Right. And when uh, when all the people who are Oculus intolerant <laughs> come to. <laughs> That's funny. Totally all focused there, but I just I had to, it came there like I got to find a way to put it in there. Right, right. Oculus, Oculus intolerant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which which actually is a thing. Like my my good friend and business partner uh Brian Atkinson from Clean Comedy Time, which by the way, shout out to Brian and Clean Comedy Time. They're dropping or yeah. we're, we're dropping, yeah. We're dropping one of these episodes uh, on that podcast, which uh, is going to be cool. That'll that'll expose a lot of people to this, which which will be fun. And and uh, yeah, clean comedy time is uh, that's that's been a cool adventure. And Brian's a big part of that. But he is oculi intolerant. <laughs> he puts those on, and he's like, uh uh-uh. uh, like he he put them on. He put a headset on went on a quick little tour and, and was sick for a couple of days. And peed you know, on himself. Yeah. Like, he, hey, he, he, he peed on what? himself, but I mean, that had nothing to do with the, <laughs> the Oculus. He just does that. <laughs> hey, it just wasn't in the bed this time. Just, <laughs> That's right. Yep. He was standing he's, up. he's making it anyway. <laughs> Shout out to my friend as we make fun of you. <laughs> Did, no. yeah, that's amazing. Cause he is a uh, very administratively, uh, dude who handles business. Get, get he, it done. He, yes. Yeah. It, I'll tell you his, his organization around like recording of that podcast. It's incredible. Yeah. Like it, which will, we got to have you on there uh, too coming up sometime yeah. soon. Cause, but he'll like, when you do like, he'll get it all scheduled. He'll send the appointments and then he'll, he'll pull clips from the comedians and send it to uh, comedians for review and walk them through exactly the format of it. And then everybody's always blown away. They're like, I've never been on a podcast like this. Nice. <laughs> this is like a, it's a serious XM radio station. <laughs> That's, well, he, it, it does help that he comes from a radio background. So like he's got the little, the timer wheel above his uh, computer and he's keeping it on track and doing the different segments and, going to commercial and, and all that. So he's, he, he's kind of going on, nice. <laughs> but you know, again, though, he is oculi intolerant. So <laughs> yeah, he's just, what if it's funny, man, if I'm sitting down doing the Oculus, like, cause normally I'm standing up and do it, you know, but then if I sit down and then I stand up, yeah. Like, Whoa, wait a minute. Like catch, hold your breath. Let your brain catch up. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's you do have to be careful. I just got some new new tools. Uh, actually, this is this is a new uh, grip oh, wow. that I got that it'll it'll hold it without actually gripping it. Yeah. Uh, so that that helps. And then this is a really cool thing. Um, this is uh, that a new. Like a- yeah, new headset. Uh, it's it's like a head strap, but it's got an extra battery in the back, um, and then it, the pressure instead of being like on the face uh, uh-huh. from the headset, it's on the top of the head to the back of the head. So the the goggles themselves are just kind of floating uh, with everything else supported by the head. It, it's a Bobo Bar M2 Pro. And it wasn't very expensive with the battery and everything. Uh, I think it was it was under fifty bucks. Dude, it makes you look like a stormtrooper. It, it's got a stormtrooper look, don't it? <laughs> 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 that wasn't lost on me. <laughs> <laughs> way way back when, I I bought a um, an iPad case. Yeah, and I bought the stormtrooper version. Which looked exactly like this. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> or, or robotic panther. Panda, panda, panther. Panda. panda. Ah, oh, there it is. Lost the joke. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Man. So, 
Oh, uh, speaking of new things, you'll probably see behind me. Uh, I saw it. Yeah, that's yeah. the. Those are the paintings uh, from Chimera, and uh, that's like the original OG crew in the in the soapstone, and uh, you know. And then I I sent it off to Hobby Lobby to get get framed. Uh, it's and we went with orange because. Uh, come to find out, uh, Renee said to me the other day, she's like, you kind of like orange, don't you? Because on our Jeep, we've got some orange trim. I've got this big orange bean bag behind me. And Yeah, I was about to talk about the bean bag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's uh, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad place to hang out and read a book or, or uh, you know, listen to a podcast or something. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's like I've been wanting to get a beanbag, but I got too many kids. They'd destroy that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the the kids, we got some nieces and nephews. Our kids are are too old now to really appreciate it, but we got some nieces and nephews in the area that, like, if if they come over to spend the night, it's a fight to see who gets the who. Yeah. They call it the blob. They're like, I want to stay on the blob. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's see we right. we get into the we get into the important stuff right. like <laughs> like the, like like the black chair. What's that black chair about? That's the... that, yeah, that's 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 like a doctor's office chair. Don't it look like <laughs> like something that'd be in a doctor's office? <laughs> that is great. Right. Yeah, and then there's a lamp behind me. That's my wife got into a little kick for a while where uh, she made she started making lamps. That's a wine bottle. I was about to say, yeah, that's a little yeah. counterproductive for you. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, unemployed, <laughs> unemployed alcoholic with no. this wine, wine bottle lamps. No, actually, like you no, know, you know what? I ended that, and the light bulb came on. There you go. Yeah. 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 Something deep there. And what do you get now? Is that uh, what? What do you got behind you going on there? Uh, that's a fire. Oh, oh, okay. Fire. All right. That's, that's the. A, that's, a, that's a fire and. Fire. Uh, uh, zebra picture of a zebra uh-huh. some, uh some antelope home. is it now is the antelope is that part of the lamp or is that just next to the lamp uh hold on let's see <laughs> don't break it that's part of the lamp huh lamp it's part of the lamp okay all right oh and, the, and then there is a giraffe head behind you as well that's a real giraffe, bro. It's, no way, really. He just he playing one, two, three, red light. It's, a, he's, it's that's uh, yeah. Oh, he's live. It's, <laughs> <laughs> the world champion of one, two, three, red light. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. See. Yeah. See. There it is, right? There. I mean, it it sure does look like a real giraffe. Is it? Is it a real giraffe? Uh, it was. It was you know, well, not live. I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a little old. Great store, <laughs> great store behind it. I don't know the whole story, but the idea was, you know, they on this village they were about to kill it on this reserve, uh, and uh, so they only in this on this reserve they only kill older giraffes, and that the food goes to the families that can be in that the mm. part of it can be eaten. And the other part goes to uh, some of the lions on the reserve. Mm. And so when they were about to kill it, someone actually with my mentor and his wife, the wife was like, she always wanted, they, they hunt game. Mm. Uh, and so she was like, that would be great, but they weren't going to do it. But then one of the people who were with her actually paid the village, the reserve, to let her be the one that, uh-huh. yeah. So nice. don't, don't send me any emails. Okay? Right. Yeah, so it yeah, was, yeah. It's part of the, the system over there. And, yeah, uh, right. So. The, yeah. the circle of life, if you circle will. Circle of life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Cool. Shout out to my friend, uh, Elwood, who has, uh, has the Lion King, uh, Pride Rock is the name of the world in, uh, in the metaverse. And in it, you can, uh, uh, you can get baby Simba and go to the edge of pride rock and, and hold him up and that. But so uh, actually here, here's, here's a good example of adapting. Yeah. So, and rolling with the flow. So he built this world pride rock and, and you can take baby Simba and, 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 uh, get him up to the edge of pride rock and hold him up. Well, what he found is 
everybody that brought him up there threw him off. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, man, how do I stop people from throwing Simba off the edge of Pride Rock? And he said, you know what? Why stop it? And so he put a scoring system in. <laughs> and so you get points for how far you can chuck Simba off of <laughs> Pride Rock. <laughs> it's, that is great. It's cool. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's interesting just to see the the different games or. Uh, just the diff- how people are evolving. Like, what does it look like to create a space yeah. that becomes a space for people to do the games and stuff? For instance, uh, Wendy's. Wendy's had were focused. They were um, they were doing a what? It, what is? It? They had a world. They were when you go into the, um, what do you call it? I'm I'm tired. Mm-hmm. When you go into Horizon Worlds, they were advertising at the welcome screen, mm-hmm. Wendy's. I was like, let me go visit Wendy's. Yeah. So they had the restaurant, but who wants to go to a fast food restaurant in the metaverse? So what was cool is outside the restaurant, they had all these cool things that you could do. Yeah. So what well, Wendy's was the attractions, like, hey, we know you coming here, but you don't just want to come to go to a restaurant, fast food restaurant or that. You come for this experience. It wasn't throwing symbol off of prior rock. It's like <laughs> we got a fountain. You actually go to the top of the water fountain. And just sit yeah, there. You know, or throw a throw a frisbee. It was just so much know, cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wendy's is a is a good and of course Wendy's as a the the corporate identity of Wendy's, you know, they have leaned into social media to the point where like their Twitter account is one of the most entertaining that you'll find. Uh, because the, I, like they're just they're just nonstop roasting people, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, you know it, it's just cool. But with that, the, you know, video games they they've advertised for a long time in video games, and they've they've just grabbed a hold of this. Well, they're really the first corporation to step into Horizon Worlds and say, yeah. "Hey, you know, I'm we're gonna we're gonna have a footprint here," mm-hmm. and it's, it's been popular, man. Like it's always on the list of, of places where people are going and, and, and with good reason. I mean, actually a good friend of mine, John McClay, who, you know, the John McClay, yeah. uh, he, he was, uh, the primary designer. He and inspire create labs, uh, with, with help, uh, from people that they contracted, but, uh, they built that and yeah. And see, that's why, and I, I've been, this is some insight and wisdom that I've gained, especially to organizations, nonprofits, churches, I guess, and even businesses. It's if you want to do something in the metaverse, that's why it's so important for you to connect with people who've been building for mm. a while. Because yeah. what, what I see is some people just want to say, we got something going on in the metaverse. Yeah. Come to our business, come to our church, because we got you can watch our service online. Yeah. Like, listen, if all you have is a screen in your world, I can watch that outside. I can work. Yeah. I can watch that in real life. Yeah. But it has to be contextualization. It's got to be people who understand the culture, the context of of the metaverse, and how to set things up that people enjoy doing. Yeah, and that's, you're exactly right. Like that that's go ahead, but I'm just that's the value of the metaverse. It's yeah. not just having something people can look at. Right. But it's an experience. Yeah, it, yep, it, it's the experience. It's a whole different way to connect with people and and uh it's it's actually similar to like a website. You know, how much does a website cost? Well, I'll tell you what, you can go down to the local high school and you can find somebody for $50 to build you a website. Right. Or, you know, if you're a big corporation, you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars doing market research uh, to to figure out what your customers want to get out of that website right. and then build it out professionally and, and all this. So uh, what does it cost to build a world in the metaverse? <laughs> you, you could you can go in and find somebody that literally for $50 will build you a world. Right. Um, or you can spend, I, I don't, I think it'd be hard to spend hundreds of thousands 
Um, I, I don't know. I haven't looked at pricing on stuff, but maybe you could, but I mean, but I know you could spend, you could easily spend tens of thousands yeah. of building out a professional, uh, world, maybe hundreds of thousands, but. Oh, um, yeah. just know if somebody's spending 10 billion a <laughs> year, <laughs> just know that the more effective it's going to be for you, the more you got to be willing to to uh to invest in it for yourself that's 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 exactly right i mean the people the people that are getting in early are the people that are going to get their legs underneath them firmly and as it builds momentum and as more people come in they're going to be the ones that can create that engaging experience for their customers Mm -hmm. for their patrons for their uh you know parishioners for for their people Mm -hmm. you know and and that right there is, is the value. And like you said, I mean, you know, $10 billion a year is what Meta is spending on building out this platform. They're not doing that because they think maybe it's going to be something. They're doing that because this is going to be something. (laughs) Maybe people might come here and play solitaire. (laughs) Right, right. It's no, this is, this is going to be a thing where this is, the future of how people are going to connect and, and, uh, and grow together. Yeah. And I think if, if your business organization, church, whatever has some type of outreach program where it's reaching out to the community, reaching out to those who patronize that particular business or those who, who your business wants to reach out to uh, in terms of its, its, its marketing tech, tactics or you know um programs this is a viable investment for outreach programs well and so there there is that outreach aspect and you know there's there's two different mindsets there's the one mindset oh go ahead yeah and and what i'm what i'm saying by outreach is i'm thinking like so for instance when i'm using the term outreach very loosely if Like, let's say, like Chick Fil A, the best ones who I've seen it do well, soon seen do this well. They'll go to a community and just say, "Hey, here's some free Chick Fil A sandwich cards." Mm-hmm. And what they're doing is, we just built this Chick Fil A. It's marketing, yeah, under the auspices of outreach. It's like, come hang out with us, get your chicken sandwich. I don't know, right, that's, right. Yeah. Well, and there's and there's two different there there's two different schools of thought. The second of which is something that I've uh, that I literally just this week started thinking about. But the traditional school of thought is, um, how are we going to reach new people through the metaverse? Um, and and that's kind of what you're talking about. If you if you get something established and then new people can come engage with your brand uh, through the metaverse. But there's a whole nother school of thought of how can we bring the metaverse to our people? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because the king like, is here. <laughs> you know, this, there's so much intrigue around the metaverse. And if you're a company, like say you're a realtor that boy, this is, this is the nature of this podcast. It, Cause we, we talked about this early on how, you know what, we're going to spit some ideas right? and some of these are good ideas, but we're just going to talk about them yeah. because uh, you know what, if somebody takes them, <laughs> then uh, so be it, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. But, but th- cause I think this is a good idea. If you're a realtor and you can bring people into the metaverse to experience your brand, you know, now all of a sudden for a very small relative investment, you know, I mean, call it 5,000 bucks, you know, invest 5,000 bucks. And then all of a sudden you can be the person to invite people into your space, like, and, you know, and, and experience like this is, man, there's some value there. That's there. great. Oh, yeah. that's great. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I've been thinking even so I'm I'm in um, Washington, the state of Washington right now. I've got a comedy show in about four and a half hours. All right. 
do I so bad now want to have a 360 camera set up and I want to do a comedy show that I set up that I just filmed for VR purposes. Yeah. Where it's a 360 degree camera and where a person can come into the show and with the Oculus sit in my crowd and look around, see people laughing beside them and see me on stage, look up, see the ceiling or look behind them and see other people laughing. That's so here, here, here's the deal. Like, and I don't have any insider knowledge. I don't have anything like that, but what you're talking about, that's going to happen, dude. Like, like there will be a Jason Earl's comedy show that has the 360 camera in the audience where people in virtual reality can come in and experience that show. That's going to happen. And, and that's man. when I went to the, when I went to the NBA uh, in, NBA mm-hmm. basketball game mm-hmm. in the metaverse. That's that's what really transformed my mind because again, I think with a lot is in particular churches are coming in, setting up. We got to come to our you know metaverse church, our VR church, and as we want to show you stuff. But it's like with the NBA, I didn't. They had a balcony set up. Yeah. And I went inside the NBA arena. <laughs> yeah. And was watching a, a, a live NBA game with other people within the metaverse. Accessibility. That, yes, sir. That's accessibility. That's to sort of set up a you know, some seats in 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 a virtual world to do a comedy show, dude. I'm dying. Yeah, that's it, it'll that happen. happen. I it was trying. Happen. I was trying to find a uh, 360 camera. Right, now, you know, I'm still trying to find one. Hopefully, one to yeah. show up before the show. Yeah. So I have a seat, and I can look at the person watching, like you watching on your Oculus right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll yeah. happen, man. Yeah. Good stuff. Every time we talk, I, I walk away uh, energized and motivated and and ready for whatever the week has so jason again man thanks for who you are thanks for sharing uh the experience of you being in your mentor's house coming off of speaking at a church getting ready to uh uh do a comedy show in a couple hours dude just it's such a privilege to be part of your inner circle and to be able to share these experiences with you man Absolutely, man. It's great to be in the armrest club with you as well, my friend. <laughs> Appreciate you, dude, being the, 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 the king of the soapstone. <laughs> so I, good, good Lord, I hope that doesn't stick. Yeah. I don't, I don't. <laughs> you have my sword. <laughs> and my hammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we will see you soon at the soapstone. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on this adventure. We will be back next week with a brand new episode, and you can always find us at jasonearls.com, theunemployedalcoholic.com, or at the Soapstone Comedy Club in Horizon Worlds. 